Hello, everybody. My name is Adriana Martin. Um, we are so excited to welcome you to Center's panel on diversity and inclusion on campus. Um, we have four Center representatives from both the staff side and the student side. Um, we're excited to share a little bit about how diversity and inclusion manifests itself on campus. Um, like I said before, my name is Adriana Martin. Um, my pronouns are she, her, and hers, and I am the assistant director for diversity recruitment on Center's campus. Um, I would love my colleagues to introduce themselves. Hi, I am Joe Toit. My pronouns are they, them, and theirs, and I am the Assistant Director of Diversity and Inclusion on campus. Hi, I'm Imani Smith. I'm a first year student here at Center College. Um, I go by she series pronouns. Um, I am currently studying areas like politics and Arabic, um, and some of the titles that I hold on campus are being a part of SGA as the DSU representative, um, finance head for the BSO, and a member of the SGA ad hoc committee on diversity. Um, I'm Phoenix. I am also a first year student, Phoenix Staten. I'm a first year student <laughs> um, at Center as well. Um, I use the she series pronouns. And I am from Raleigh, North Carolina, and I am currently studying or uh, on the anthro social and Spanish track for, as my, for my intended majors and possibly a minor in linguistics. Um, and some titles I have, I am a New Horizons Scholar for one, and I also um, am a center ambassador. So I do a lot of lunch hosting, overnight hosting, um, things of that nature, just to kind of like make center or give prospective students the feel of what center is. Um, and I'm part of a wide variety of clubs from Center Environmental Association to Sister to Sister. So yeah, that's me. <laughs> Thank you all so much for being here. Um, Joe will lead us in a presentation to give you all some introductions on diversity and inclusion at center. And then we'll go into some Q&A discussion. All right. Y'all can see the presentation? Yeah. All right, awesome. So the mission of the Office of Diversity and Inclusion is to promote and sustain a diverse and inclusive learning, living, and working environment in which all members of our campus community can uh, thrive and succeed on campus no matter what position they hold. Um, and so our office is here to serve students, but also our faculty and staff who also serve students, um, providing support as well as the knowledge and tools to have a more inclusive campus and to prepare lifelong learners and leaders, um, not only on our campus, but as they go across the globe to wherever their next step is past center. Right now, our office is in the process of doing some strategic planning to articulate how we're gonna to work towards having a more just and inclusive center campus by following our mission and then the goals that you see here on the screen. Uh, this is work that um, our office is engaging in, but we're also um, engaging in members all across campus because this isn't just our job, it's everybody's job. Everybody has to be a part of diversity and inclusion work on our campus. And so um, that's really what we're working towards. The most visible part of our work is the campus programming that we do. And so um, here is a list of some of the programming that we do. Um, we have a Building Bridges and Community Day, which is a campus-wide day to get together, learn more about each other, learn some school um, tools towards social justice. Um, we commemorate MLK Day um, with a day of service, as well as a, a convocation. We have diversity and inclusion convocations that we help sponsor. Um, and then we also have a intercultural suite on campus. It's a designated space on campus uh, for our students. It's a place that everyone can go and we hope that they can have important conversations around social justice, diversity and inclusion, where they can learn, where they can be themselves. Um, and this space was dedicated in October of 2018. Um, and over the next couple, of months, we're hoping to um, 
work on making that a very inclusive space, changing the way it looks if you've seen it on campus. We also have a video walkthrough that you can look at to just get a feel of what it's like to be in the intercultural suite and uh, meet our director um, in that video. And so our staff, we have three staff members in the office. Um, so I'm the assistant director. Ashley Oliver is our director of diversity and inclusion. And then Andrea Abrams is the associate vice president for diversity affairs and a special assistant to the president. Um, so Dr. Abrams had been an anthropology professor at Center College. She's been here for many years um, and she recently stepped into this role as the office was built. She also serves as a member of senior staff, so she directly has a seat at the table during all of the senior staff meetings and the conversations happening at that level. Uh, Ashley and I serve on a ton of committees across campus. We work very collaboratively um, with almost everyone um, that there is to work with. Uh, and we also have a very um, unique partnership with the Student Life Office. We sit in on their weekly meetings um, and they have really welcomed us into that office even though uh, we're technically part of academic affairs. And so that's enough about our office and our staff and what we do. So we wanna hear more from the students about what they're doing and um, their perspectives about campus. So. Um, Adriana, I'm going to give it back to you to lead the Q&A. Great. Thank you, Joe. That was wonderful. Um, like I said before, um, I work in our admission office as the assistant director for diversity inclusion, or my goodness, not as, as <laughs> assistant director for um, diversity recruitment. Um, I also have the pleasure of being one of the advisors for the New Horizons program, which is great. I work pretty closely with Joe and with Ashley on that work. Uh, but then also get to do some neat advising for some of our clubs on campus. RISE is one of them, which is Refugees and Immigrants Speaking Up for Equality. Um, but then also get to have a really neat kind of mentorship relationship with some students as well. Um, enough about me though, Phoenix and Imani, I'd love to hear a bit about your experiences at Center so far. I know that both of you are pretty early in your Center career and that you're both first years. You have about a semester on campus on your bell and then about half on campus and now we're kind of doing Zoom school. Um, but I, I would love to hear more about ways that you all see yourselves growing in leadership and diversity and inclusion. Are there opportunities for leadership you see for yourselves? Is there maybe a club or an organization you'd like to grow in or an initiative you would like to begin? Um, anything like that? Maybe Phoenix, you can start off and then we'd love yeah. to hear from you, Mani. Sure. Um, so as being so early in my center career, I specifically see, my, see myself growing as a leader within my scholarship group, um, that New Horizons scholarship group, um, and definitely taking the things that we talk about in our meetings, because we have some really great presentations in there, um, and bringing those to my everyday conversations that I have. So for example, one of my classmates and a really good friend of mine um, presented on, um, how to support a friend who is sharing a piece of their own identity with you, um, specifically sexual, their sexual identity. Um, and I feel like as one uh, out of a handful of so many students in the scholarship group, it is my duty to kind of spread and circulate this information to others in order to make the center community itself um, more open and vulnerable and willing to have these um, conversations, whereas you might not know the proper questions to ask in order to start the conversations. So kind of being a leader in that aspect, um, some opportunities that I see myself participating in in the future, I've kind of participated in it already. This, Feb this past February, I was able to present my microaggressions workshop, and that was really awesome. <laughs> I really enjoyed it, um, and I hope that all the students enjoyed it as well, but kind of um, implementing smaller scale workshops for my own peers to participate in is something that I see myself doing in the future um, on campus and kind of taking those workshops outside of campus if possible as well. 
um, and not only outside of campus, but extending those educational opportunities um, to my peers. Um, I've talked to Ashley, as she was re referenced earlier um, in the video, um, about kind of creating more student-led diversity and inclusion convocations at Center's campus, um, just as a student-based initiative. Um, I feel like that would both address all of our interests to get to know each other as a student body, um, and then also act as a springboard for important and fully transformative conversations surrounding identity and how to care and nurture for our similarities as well as differences as students. So those are some things that I see in the future. <laughs> I love that. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, so um, also as a first year, I've also been given lots of opportunities to um, sort of take on leadership roles here on Sooners campus. Um, I sort of talked about it a little bit earlier, um, but um, my being a part of the BSO, the Black Student Union, for the Black Student Organization here on Sooners campus. Um, I've been able to help sort of in the early structuring of that organization, um, even though it was officially started or established or reestablished last semester um, by some other students. Um, this semester I've been able to sort of help with the, con with the continuation of that infinity group. Um, and then also sort of learn just how all of this kind of works, um, how to all the, sort of technical side of um, working with these organizations and with these groups on campus. Um, another sort of um, leadership role that I've taken on is my role in SGA, the Student Government Association, um, both as um, diversity student union representative and also as a member of the ad hoc committee on um, diversity, inclusion, equity. Those two roles, I've sort of seen how I, uh, throughout the course of the semester, um, I've sort of seen how um, I've been able to sort of merge those roles and allow them to sort of work together in not only establishing um, or reestablishing that sense of communication between the diversity student union, which opens which opens itself up to all identities and um, really tries to speak a message of inclusiveness on Center's campus, but I've been able to establish communication between that and the formation of the intercultural um, committee or the intercultural council that is um, sort of also a part of my work with the SGA ad hoc committee on diversity. So there's a lot of opportunities on campus to get involved and to um, sort of just get your hands, I don't want to say just get your hands dirty, but to get your hands involved in making Center into a more inclusive, uh, welcoming space, it, it has already begun to get on the track of that and it's doing a great job. And I can't wait to see all the things that you all do when you get to campus. Um, so that you can do that yourselves and so you can bring your perspectives and your um, insights to Center's campus on how we can better do that. Um, I think that one club or organization that I would like to serve or completely sort of give myself a little bit more to is more of the development of the ICC. Um, there have been a lot of talks about sort of what it would look like on campus. Um, and it's it's an exciting initiative here on Center's campus. So when you all get here, you're going to learn about it. You're going to see it. You're going to see everything that all of our hard work. Um, but you, I really hope that when you all get here, you will get involved with the ICC as it will be representing all infinity groups on campus and really just sort of just take it to heart and understand that it is also your committee. Um, and yeah, that's that's most of my, I guess, my little short spiel of my short time on Center's campus and what I've been involved in already. So yeah. No, that's amazing. I think one thing, um that I find so great is, is the impact that students can have on campus. And we owe so much to the dedication and the time and the work that students put in to enriching our community and to making us better. So um, thank you all. And like one semester, you all have already done so much. And so I, I'm excited to see that growth and, um, and you are making a difference and that is really powerful. So there, there's a lot to be proud of there. Um, 
Imani, I, I kind of have a follow-up question for you. So, um, and maybe it's related to your work on SGA, maybe it isn't, but, um, you know, I've heard, so sometimes folks like to say that center is a place where important conversations happen. I think a lot of that comes from, you know, the convocations that we bring, but also having been a place that has hosted vice presidential debates, right? Like we're a place where dialogue I think is valued. Um, can you tell us maybe about some experiences that you have maybe had with dialogue as a center student so far? Yeah, um, coming onto center's campus, I've I wouldn't say that I've been thrown into so many different um, perspectives and initiatives um, or yeah, so many different perspectives and so many just different cultures, different ways of thinking, but I have. Um, that's one of the things that I can definitely say with full confidence um, from coming onto Center's campus is that even though it's small and some of us joke that we're in the middle of nowhere, we're not, we're connected to way um but even though center is small it is open and it is inclusive and it is that place where students um if they didn't feel like they were comfortable talking about having conversations before they're definitely doing it now um i would even go so far as to say that center is in its own sort of renaissance when it comes to diversity um and that it is this sort of resurgence of well, we all come from these different backgrounds. We all come from these different um, ways of living. We all come from these different perspectives and we're all here on this campus. Um, so let's make the most of it. Let's educate each other about ourselves and about each other and about the world as we see it. And let's make, um, let's make center into this place in which everyone can do that and do that comfortably. Um, I know that personally, um, just from being a first year, I have run into a lot of maybe upperclassmen that have said that maybe it hasn't always felt that way for them, but mm -hmm. I've been, personally, I've been blessed to, to have come into contact with them because they have really been the movers and the shakers over the past few years. May, writing those wrongs and making center into the place that they want it to be, um, putting student engagement where it belongs, putting it on a pedestal, emphasizing it, making sure that it is heard, making sure that everyone's voices are heard. And so I would say that most definitely um, just from my first year, um, I have had the distinct opportunity of having conversations about um, race relations on campus, um, how people feel about religion, how um, people feel about um, inclusivity and in politics, about the entire power dynamic outside of center, um, and how we sort of deal with that here in center's community. So um, I think that even if I hadn't assumed so many leadership roles this semester, I think I still would have come in contact with those conversations, with those dialogues. Um, and I know that when you all get here, that will definitely be something that, that will happen for you as well. So it's gonna be an exciting time. It has been an exciting time for me. Um, and then going into being a sophomore next year, I know that I'll be able to further affect that. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, I think a good thing that you mentioned that I, I kind of wanted to highlight was that like, you know, growth and healthy dialogue doesn't always mean being comfortable all the time. Like I think it's when we exist and push ourselves to have conversations about things that we might be uncomfortable about, while of course like preserving humanity, right, and being respectful. Um, we can have a lot of growth and I, and, and I am thankful for students and faculty and staff that are kind of willing to take the conversation there, which I think is great. Um, at the same time though, like finding a sense of comfort is really important. And so Phoenix, I, I would love to hear about a place where you maybe feel the most at home when you're on campus. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the easy answer for this is my dorm and my bed, <laughs> um, but there's not really one physical place, if I'm going to be honest, where I feel the most at home on campus just because um, I feel the most at home when I'm surrounded by people that I love and that are willing to grow along with me. Um, and I've had the wonderful opportunity of getting to know so many people at Center, whether we are 
completely polar opposites or click like this. Um, so I would have to say I feel like the most spiritually, emotionally, like at home and comfortable and at ease um, when I'm around the people who I have connected with on campus. And that's honestly practically everywhere because, I mean, it's such a small community where it's like, you go to the library and you see like one of your good friends or somebody who you had a very transformative conversation with the other day. Um, and then you're in the library and you see your classmates who you've had great conversations with or you've had times when they've needed your assistance, you've needed their assistance. Um, go to the campus center, Cowan, great place for, as Imani was saying, like dialogue. Um, so honestly, everywhere on campus that's that's gonna be my my answer <laughs> that's good that's great um kind of a follow-up to that so um you know center is a predominantly white institution both on the student side but also on the faculty and staff side um i'm curious if you're comfortable sharing how navigating that has been like for you and are there areas of growth that you see for the college are there areas of strength can you give us some of your perspectives absolutely um so I kind of, all of my schooling before college has also been in predominantly white settings. So navigating the, navigating through that side of college has kind of been easier than I expected, um, especially because coming in, I feel like I was already thinking, okay, these are people who have like their PhDs. These are professors who are like, professionals and the things that they teach. So I also have to come with some sort of like knowledge on these areas, whereas they're actually like really open open to having, to answering any question that I might have. Um, so I think that it's really proven to be a community effort and on the educational aspect of it, um, to make everybody feel safe and accepted in the classroom. Um, I could say, me personally, I've never felt like I was unsafe when I did have physical classes where I couldn't like speak my mind or say anything that I wanted, not necessarily anything that I wanted, um, but say the things that were regarding the topic that might be a little bit kind of like ruffling some feathers. I never, I've never felt unsafe to say those things. Um, so I feel like an area of strength that the faculty and staff have is making sure um, voices get heard in the classroom, um, whether you are saying something that might be controversial or kind of like staying on that path of keeping the conversation in a direction that doesn't hurt people's feelings per se. Sure. Um, now, I do believe that areas where we can kind of like strengthen our faculty and staff is definitely diversifying it. Um, as a black woman myself, um, there are only maybe three other black female professors on campus, including Dr. Abrams. Um, and that's difficult for me to see just because I don't see very many black women um, in positions where they are successful on campus, honestly. Um, so I think definitely diverse, diversifying our faculty and staff just to make um, our students feel a lot more open on campus, I think that would definitely um, help. And then kind of like tying back another area of strength um, to what Imani was talking about before in her response, um, just the resources that we have to make students feel like they are comfortable on campus because we have quite a few um, and kind of like talking about the clubs that we have, um, whether it's Pride Alliance, um, SGA, um, MSA, um, clubs like that. So students feel like their voices can be heard mm -hmm. um, and they can connect to other students who might be like similar to them or have similar um, interests to them or experiences, I feel like that is an area of strength that the institution provides for us. And then also, I, I just wanna, this is my last thing. I think the faculty and staff do a really great job at encouraging us to attend um, diversity and inclusion convocations um, because I feel like sometimes students 
who need to show up don't necessarily show up. But if you're encouraged by a professor to do it, whether it's for a class requirement or just to kind of attend um, and get your own perspective on it, I feel like that's a really great um, thing that our professors do to make students kind of hear other perspectives and hear other experiences um, and things like that. So, yeah. Thank you, Phoenix. I, um, I really liked your point about like being able to see yourself reflected in faculty and staff. I think it is so, um, it's so powerful to see somebody who's like you doing really great work and, and that inspires you to do better and to be better. And so I think that, that that's my hope to, um, as we continue to grow is that we can continue to reflect our student body, um, both in the programming that we have, but also in like the people um, that are doing the work on campus. Uh, so thank you. Um, we have like one final formal question and then after if there are any things that you all didn't get a chance to say that you wanted to say, there's plenty of time. Um, but obviously I think you know, self-care is something that is on a lot of people's minds as um, we are going through a, a difficult and constantly changing time. Um, when you're on campus though, Imani, I, I would love to hear a bit about how you are able to take care of yourself. Are there any places you like to go, rituals that you do? How do you take care of Imani during the year? Yeah, so I guess one thing that I would emphasize is that even in the midst of like, being a center student and um, with being, <clears throat> excuse me, with um, trying to create a change on center's campus, trying to get involved um, and even holding leadership positions, you have to take time to like sort of do your own sort of checkups on yourself, make sure that you are in the correct mental space to do the most work. Um, to do the most effective work. Um, so I would say that for me, mostly um, with my time on campus, it has been surrounding myself with a community in which um, I can freely talk with people about sort of what's going on if I'm overthinking about something. Um, and then just also realizing that you're, you're a college student. You don't have to have everything figured out right now. Um, as Phoenix mentioned earlier, we have an incredible um, staff and faculty here on campus that are open to um, talking with you about your future, about some of the things that you're considering, about if it's a class that you're taking with them. Um, and then sometimes you'll just have and this is probably for like most professors, but a good portion of professors, they just, they're okay with if you need to just come into their office hours and just sort of talk through um, how you're feeling, how you're feeling, how you're feeling on campus, um, how is campus treating you. So um, definitely those things I definitely took advantage of this um, past semester was, you know, while you're being immersed in the center community, also allow the things that the center community is promising, um, being there for you, um, helping you sort of figure out the world from the center out. Um, <laughs> and I, I would definitely encourage everyone to sort of do that. Mm -hmm. And if you have to remove yourself from um, a situation or from certain conversations, do so so that you can adequately like reflect through like what you're saying, how other people are coming into the conversation and so that you can do things um, to the most effective way possible. Um, there are also many events on Center's campus like CC After Dark. Um, there's different places in Danville, um, different eateries. Um, and if you're, um, if you have a religious affiliation, there are many different um, institutions here in Danville there in Danville, I'm not in Danville right now, um, in Danville, um, in which you can get sort of that um, spiritual sort of maintenance. So take advantage of all the things that Center has to offer, that Danville has to offer, because it's there for you as a student to holistically treat you as a human being and to take care of you both academically, um, but also spiritually and emotionally. Give yourself time. This, you're, you're a college student. Congrats. You'll be fine. <laughs> I agree. Retweet to everything you just said. <laughs> Did anyone else want to add any last, any last words or anything? 
I kind of want to tie into um, Amani's question sure. and just stress the importance of taking time for yourself. Um, I feel like whether you are involved in any leadership positions or not, center itself um, can be very academically rigorous. So making sure that you take the time and you kind of acknowledge that, I feel like that is a part of taking care of yourself. Um, even if it's, you know, removing yourself from one of your classes or um, saying, hey, I'm not able to have this group meeting right now. Can we change it to another time? Um, just being very open with yourself and vulnerable with yourself to what you need, I feel like is another part to staying healthy on Center's campus and just maintaining your own mental health and nurturing it. Mm -hmm. so. I guess any further words from me would probably just be some further encouragement um, <laughs> for like everyone pretty much on Center camp Center's campus, but especially for those coming in. Um, I would just say, and I don't mean this in any negative way, but brace yourself. Center is a, like Phoenix said, is an academically rigorous community, but it is also a very tight-knit community. We're a small school, but we're also a community that is there for each other, um, a community in which we stress, um, do your best, be your best, no regrets. Um, <laughs> e. Roush, love you. Um, but um, just just get involved give yourself time to sort of figure it all out um you don't have to figure it all out in the first semester i didn't um but when you get to center's campus just come to the campus coming um if you have any goals having those set in mind but coming with the realization that you have to be flexible and you have to be flexible about um, some of the things that you will um sort of encounter you're going to encounter a lot of stuff on campus and you're going to encounter a lot of um, opportunities on campus to do really great things, make the most of every opportunity. There are so many opportunities here on Center's campus, um, but like reiterating, um, take time for yourself, realize who you are and the things that you stand for, and you're gonna do great, trust me. <laughs> Please, Phoenix. Final words. <laughs> Um, I would just like to also stress, like, there is no mold for a center student. Um, I feel like coming in, I was kind of feeling overwhelmed because I was like, I have to do this. I have to do that. I have to keep up. But in no way, shape, or form do the things, in no way, shape, or form is there a certain fit for being a center student. Um, if you decide to come to center, you are a center student. So keeping that in mind, especially when there are a lot of things to participate, um, as Imani was participating, as Imani was saying, um, staying passionate in the things that you're passionate in, um, because before you are a center student, you are a person. So making sure that you stay um, solid in the things you believe in is really important, and it kind of helps you figure out what your role as a student should be and how you navigate through Center's campus. And everybody's so different on Center's campus. Um, like I said, I've had conversations with people who are completely opposite um, than me um, and they've been wonderful conversations. And it's just kind of like, it's a testament to Center being a diverse institution where we value diversity of thought um, not only geographical, um, ethnic, or racial um, diversity, but also how people kind of like think through things. So just as a reminder, there is no mold to fit once you get on campus. You kind of shape your, shape your own way here and don't really feel, feel, feel peer pressured to fall into any, anything because you are your own student. Amen to that. <laughs> <laughs> agreed, agreed. I think our, our experiences are more enriched when we, we bring our fullest and our, and our truest selves. 
um, to the community. So, so thank you. Um, just in general, a thank you um, to, to Phoenix, Imani, and Joe. I know you all do a lot of work to make our campus better. So, so thank you for that. Thank you for all of your time. Um, I don't take it for granted and, and I hope that our community doesn't. Um, obviously this is just like a snippet and a very brief look into diversity and inclusion on campus. So um, if you're watching and you'd like to, to know more, um, we, we completely invite those conversations. We love diving into that. Um, thank you if you are watching for your time. Um, again, if you have more questions, we'll put up our contact information, but I think that's all we have for now. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and that's our contact information. Feel free to reach out to us by email. Um, and hopefully we will see you on campus soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>